Hey, I'm Jeff from Brilliant Labs, and just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us for this presentation of Writing to the Future. This is actually going to be a recorded session that we did previously, uh, but we thought it was a good time to play it again, just because it's uh, next week on Tuesday is what's being called Tuesday, like the number two, because the date is the 22nd day of the second month in the year 2022. So it's 22 in the second month of the 22nd year, and it's a Tuesday. So it's all these twos. It's perfect. Um, and then we thought we would get you to be thinking about this idea of time capsules with maybe in, you know, 11 years on March the 3rd of 2033. So that's 3333. Three, three, maybe you'll be able to open it then and it will be a really cool activity when you're a bit older. So thanks again for joining us. We hope you enjoy this uh, repeat presentation and the activity that follows. Thanks so much. All right, well, let's get started. Uh, we'll start by saying good morning to everybody, to the students from all over Nova Scotia joining us this morning to talk about the future and to, uh, to have some fun making something along the way as well. Uh, my name is Jeff Henniger, and I'm a teacher in the Halifax area working with Brilliant Labs. I'm Sarah Ryan. I am a Brilliant Labs program director for Nova Scotia, and we are so excited to be doing another live show with you. Yeah, these have been a lot of fun, so uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back as well. And we've got lots of teachers on the call with us here this morning as well, so thank you all for joining us. We're really excited today because we are, even though we are in 2021, we are talking to our future selves. We're going to be making a little, like I like to call it a bookmark, um, whether it's for today, this week, this month, or this year, to kind of highlight what has been going on for us and our family, our community, as much as we want to expand upon that. And uh, and I'm not sure if you've had a chance to gather things at home or if you're going to do this later. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to, to think ahead too and to think about what's, what, you know, our, ourselves are going to be like in the future. And if you could... If you could tell yourself something in the future, if you could like send a message to your future self, what would you want to say? Uh, so something else we wanted to discuss today was um, something that I'll, I'll call the SDGs. So what that stands for is the Sustainable Development Goals. So back in 2015, um, the group called the United Nations, so this is where there's people from countries all over the world come together and they have meetings and they try and make some decisions about some things that are going to affect the planet, everybody in the world. So it's it's not just governments uh, like within a country, it's people from countries all over the world coming together to try and make decisions. And they set um, back in 2015 that they wanted to try and make some big changes on a global scale. So all over the world. Um, and these big changes were things that should try and happen by the year 2030. They looked at all these different things that were happening all over the world and tried to find some things that they noticed were happening in lots of places. So it's not just a problem that's happening in one or two. These are global issues that we are trying to uh, trying to solve. So they set this this ambitious goal, like it's like a, a goal that would be hard to reach to by the year 2030 to try and solve these 17 global issues. So uh, just to tie in with this idea of a time capsule, try and picture yourself in the year 2030. So from right now, that's that's like nine years from nine now. Years. That's how a long time. How old would you time. be in nine years? If you're well, trying to think at home, how old? I'm not asking you, Sarah. You don't have to say. <laughs> no, the kid, no, like I'm, I'm thinking of my that. kids right now. My kids will be. My my son oh, my is uh, is nine right now, so he will be 18. He will just have turned an adult in the year wow. 2030. So it's so, kind of so interesting to think about me, that. So. <laughs> yeah. And I, uh, I I brought a photo of him to add to our time capsule. I'm not so sure if he knows about it, but it's a really great <laughs> one. It, she really demonstrates his his uh, attitude <laughs> in a nice way. But uh, <clears throat> when you're in your 30s or you're a grown up, nine years doesn't seem like such a big 
span of time, but when you are still growing and developing and going through school, nine years is a huge difference. So this will be interesting to see uh, when I, I've made time capsules throughout my whole life. So I, this is something I've been doing. I have them buried all over my property because I live where I grew up. So oh, that's this fun. is going to be another, yeah, this is going to be another. I actually dug one up to um, find when I was finding a spot to put this one. So it was very interesting. I didn't um, bring it for uh, for demonstration, but maybe I'll take some photos later. Nice. That'll be fun to see. <laughs> Trying to connect this idea of these sustainable development goals to thinking about our future. Um, so how things are right now, we people often use the word and scientists are using the word that we are in a climate crisis. There is, mm -hmm. there are so many things changing, like including the earth's temperature has been rising every year that if it continues, we'll continue to see um, more changes happening to the earth that we, we won't be able to fix and put back. So the time is now to make these big changes um, to change the way that we produce products. So like the way that factories are run and the way we use and make electricity, um, all these different things kind of pile up and come together to create the climate crisis. So we have some, some big choices and changes to make over the next few years. If we want to, as normal citizens of Canada, if we want to do our part to try and help the United Nations reach these goals, um, it's going to take some changes for all of us. And absolutely. So just keeping on theme with what we've been looking at for the past couple of weeks there, Jeff, as far as sustainability with growing things from kitchen scraps instead of necessarily buying everything, looking at ways that we can contribute to a better environment, um, food security, helping our neighbors and our community. This is all, um, it's great to look back at what was happening this week for us, but also to make sure we leave a message so that when we open this up with our future selves or our family, we look back and say, look, back when I was whatever age, I was working towards helping with these goals. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was on the United Nations website this morning, and I just thought this uh, for teachers or just students as well, if you're if you're interested. Um, so on the United Nations website for each of their 17 goals, they have some pretty nice documents with some uh, with some hard facts and some truths and some uh, some tips as well for ways that we as uh, as citizens of the world can make some changes. So worth checking out on the uh, UN.org website. We are all global citizens, so whether we're working together as a community or a province, we are working together to make a better future for ourselves, definitely our children, our children's children, and our generations. Yeah, it's, it's true. It, it does take all of us to, to make these kinds of changes, and it doesn't have to be quiet change either. You can share with, with others what you're doing and let people know about these things, because if you, you know, if you ask some people and you said, you know, about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, some people might not even have heard of this yet. So it's hard to reach a goal if you haven't heard of the goal. So, uh, so spreading the word about this stuff is pretty important. Communication is key. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you want to make a time capsule, Sarah? You got your stuff ready? I sure do. I have a really weird assortment of things, but I think that's really a good representation of myself. <laughs> so it's very varied. And I am going to be working with something that I can put outside for longevity reasons. I'm going to switch my camera, but I do have, I am working with plastic um, today. So you know, I was thinking of doing something. I was thinking I'm going to put it underground. I had the one I dug up was something that was metal. So over time, um, the the moisture and the soil had degraded that corroded the metal. So some of the stuff oh. inside wasn't really so great. But the sorry, I'm going to use this. I think it was a cheese puff thing. I don't know what it was. But the thing is, is that uh, I'm going to use that. Um, and uh, I have a great assortment of things to put in there. And uh, I'm going to also make a little map for my future self ah. to remember where it is because I knew the general area from the one from about 20 years ago, but it took a little bit of digging. Luckily, we were digging up to plant some stuff from our gardening episodes, so I kind of combined that in one. Nice. You have to borrow a metal detector or something to see if you can I track it. I have one. Out. Yeah. Do you exactly. have one? Oh, that's I fun. do have one, and, and my son Lennon has a little handheld one, but I'm going to be using plastic today, but mm -hmm. there will be some metal things in there, so it depends on how accurate that metal detector is, but I'm going to make a map this time. Nice. Yeah. So if you do plan to bury yours, if you have an outdoor space where that's going to work for you, you do want to make sure that it's not going to let water seep in. So like that plastic container, uh, you might even like sorry, put some duct tape around it once it's all sealed up just to help the water stay out so it doesn't uh, seep in over time or in the winter when you know the ground 
freezes and hardens up and that kind of stuff. So uh, I am going to be making one that's intended to be hidden inside my house. So we know not everybody has an outdoor space. And so for that, you can hide it inside too. Uh, so for me, I'm probably going to try and find like some top shelf of a closet or somewhere that we don't usually look so that uh, if I can, if it's possible to lose it in my own home, that's going to be the goal. I want to like lose track of this thing and forget about it so that in the future uh, I could stumble upon it and it'll be something fun to open up and have a look at. Absolutely. So that's a good option to do. I mean, you don't need to have a big space to bury it. And certainly if you live in an urban area, you can't just, you know, go around burying things in parks. So we want to make sure yeah. we have more than one option. Yeah, it's true. You have to have to own the property that, you, <laughs> that you're burying it on. Or maybe a relative or a friend would let you bury it as well. Exactly. I have a um, recent photo of my son here. <laughs> I'm going to put that in there. I really like this one because he's, he's looking like a really tough guy for eight, but he's actually a real jokester. I, I really like owls, so I have a few of these owl barrettes. I still, I'm not, I haven't decided if I'm going to include that or not. It's really special to me, and that's why I chose it, but I may, um, I may keep it. I'm not sure. You got to be really careful. So if you're going to bury something outside and you're not so sure on it, um, and you don't want to really dig it up until it's a couple of years, if you leave a note to yourself and a map, make sure that you want to bury it. And lately, I have been working on a project to replace fuses in my vehicle, and I brought one of the fuses that I took out um, to put it there because that's something that I've been really learning working my son and, and learning how to do to, to kind of repair some things that are not working in my vehicle, and I thought that we spent so much time, it would be neat to include that fuse in there. And then, of course, I have a piece of paper that I'm going to write my future self and my son a message on. Cool. I love the idea of the of the fuse. Um, just like thinking about something that you are interested in learning more about and that you've kind of been focusing on this year. So that's kind of cool. That's all like that addition. Yeah. So hopefully by the time that I dig this up, I'll have fixed the problem with my car. I have I have some of the same types of things. I found so in my mail, the flyers came from a restaurant. So I thought that might just be a fun way to show what things cost in the year 2021. So when I look back, it'd be like, you know, when I think about when I was a kid. Um, things were much cheaper. So it, it's kind of interesting to think about how prices change over time. So I had some coupons I wanted to put in. Uh, I have a craft from both of my kids. And like Sarah, I also have a coin and a stamp ready to go. And just a couple of my hobby related things, kind of like Sarah had too. I have a guitar pick and also something that's off my 3D printer. So this is uh, made out of plastic. I recognize that turtle from one of your yeah. people ads, I believe. And been you play guitar. Wow, that's a great I I would put a guitar pick in there, but I always lose and end up using a bread tag. <laughs> and it's been a while since I play guitar. So I guess we're gonna go with the fuse, but nice selection. And you know what? Now I'm thinking it'd be good to have a flyer with a date, but uh, we'll go ahead and do this and maybe I'll grab something. Um, so teachers, I, I did share a bit of a list of things that you can include in the writing, but I just thought I'm not going to write my whole letter right now, but just to kind of think about some ideas for things that um, students could be adding in their letter, you might write something um, like a paragraph about yourself to say about me. So you could write about your hobbies, your favorite movies, books, or songs that you like right now. Um, to write a little bit about your family, and it's it might be fun in you know eight years or more to see what kind of music you liked when you were a kid and how different that is. So, a little bit about yourself is great. Uh, like Sarah was saying, we can explain the items. I love that climate change. My hopes. Yeah. So my hopes for twenty thirty, and the future in general. I guess maybe I'll put that. That's kind of fun to think about, um, you know, when when you're a kid, what you think you're going to do when you grow up or what you want to be or accomplish. And then, you know, when you're an adult to kind of it's just can be kind of funny or interesting to see how how your ideas have stayed the same or changed. And I'm also going to add a question uh, about the future. So if you could ask yourself a question, what would you what would you ask your future self? So I've just got this cardboard box. I could decorate this box, too. That could be a fun activity. That could be. So I was actually taking the label off. Um, if you're working with a glass or plastic container, you can soak it to remove the label. But this is actually kind of perfect because it didn't fully come off. And I could put take a Sharpie or marker and put a little label on there to uh, future Sarah. 
and uh, the date. And, uh, you know, that may or may not come off when it's buried. But I'm going to put this, like you mentioned, Jeff, to duct tape it and then put the whole thing in a bag even. So, again, I'm using plastics, but everything I'm using today is recycled. We have a question yeah, it's here. It's hard, hard to track down hidden things in a yard, I guess. Oh, do we have something in the chat? Perfect. Yeah. Naomi from 3-4 Kent is wondering if you can put anything in the box. Wow. Um, well, Jeff, what are you? I have one. I have one to avoid. I would avoid anything that has a battery. So if it has a battery in it, so anything electronic would not yes. probably be a good thing because if you've ever like found an old battery, even just like in a cupboard, sometimes the uh, the acids inside can leak out a little bit. So it can be a little bit a uh, little bit dangerous potentially, and we wouldn't want those things leaking outside into the ground as well, especially. So anything with a battery, I would suggest. And actually, that's a very good point because uh, a lot of people don't know, but I have a couple friends who are volunteer firefighters, and they say that one of the main um, causes of, uh, of fires in within landfills are batteries that aren't properly disposed of. So you can't just throw batteries in the garbage or even have them sitting in your junk drawer, which I have been uh, guilty of doing in the past. But be even if they, you just think that they're not active anymore, they should probably be taken to your local um, Enviro Depot or, or look online where you can dispose of those because they can be really dangerous as far as a fire starter. We also, we were kind of putting in some personal items. Anything that you're putting in there, especially if you're going to bury it in the yard, you'd probably want to check with uh, with an adult around and make sure that it's okay with them too. Because uh, I've picked items that they're special to me, but they're not things that I'm going to be like looking for. Like, oh, I really wish I had that that one 3D printed thing that I made. Like, I'm, I'm choosing items that... Uh, that are special and will remind me of something, but they're not like expensive or, you know, a family heirloom that was passed down or anything. So uh, that's right. That's permission and before you, you put things in there, maybe. You brought up a good point, Jeff, is that even though I, so I mentioned I have a business card with my information on there, that that's, I'm an adult and that's readily available on the internet, but um, you may want to make sure that the information that you're, if you're putting it outside of your house, that your parents are okay with what you write down to, because you never know. Um, somebody else may find it. We always want to be aware that we have to be secure and safe about our. To just decide that I'm going to keep my my owl barrette because I just <laughs> that's a good example of I guess <laughs> that something I love owls and I love barrettes, but I think that um, <clears throat> once I dig a hole to put this into, and I'm thinking, oh, I really wish I kept the owls. That's good. good. Yeah, exactly. So make sure you you make make a good decision on what you put in. There. So I'm going to keep the owl. Uh, Jeff and Sarah, this is Anita from 3-4 Kent. Hi. Um, hi. Uh, Tommy is wondering if clothing would be appropriate to put in. Like maybe, I'm, I'm thinking Tommy's a huge hockey fan. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, again, if there's permission from the family, like something to do with your hobbies is a great idea. Yeah. And if, I would if you, want, maybe something that's like getting a little bit smaller, you don't wear much anymore, but. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. If you're going to put a whole jersey in there, that might be difficult. But if you had one that you had permission to cut up, you could always put a piece of it in there and maybe put a note on like your favorite game or something about that year or that if you're like I said, if it's sports team, something that why it's yeah. in there. Um, and if you're burying it, then certainly, like I said, put it in something that's not going to kind of like, with the time fall apart. But that's such a great idea. Great idea, Tommy. Hockey Thank cards you. would be a great way to show some yeah, sport, uh, sure. the stuff you're yeah. doing, a Pokemon card yeah. or some other hobby that you're into like that would be a great addition. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Our pleasure. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us this morning. This was a lot of fun and we hope to see you again in, uh, in future sessions. So keep, uh, keep an eye out for what's coming next week. Exactly. And... So have a great day to your present self and to your future self. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks.